Hi, my name's Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil, and this is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. Today we're going to just build a simple object here, and uh, the goal is to try and show some workflows and techniques that would help you get over the hump of just trying to get started with Rhino. Maybe you've just downloaded it, maybe you've just purchased it. You want to start moving along in your career here. So with, um, with most models, and I've got this here so you can just see what we're going to build, I start with an image file, and I'll show you how to get, I'll show you how to, to import that image file if we just delete this for now. And we run the picture command. Pick this, your image from the desktop, we'll just drop it in the window here. And you'll notice that my, this sketch is, you know, kind of off kilter and probably not super symmetrical. So let's, let's give ourselves a little bit better shot at working with it here. I'm going to pick it, go to the material, or to go to the properties. Go to the materials and then roll down here and we'll just raise the transparency a little bit so you can see through it then we'll take it using gumball and place it i'm going to kind of use the eyes as the center of this thing and then i'm going to just rotate it a little bit so it's a little straighter and we'll slide it around here like this and then just for organizational purposes i'm going to right click here and i'm going to change the object layer Go to the perspective view and pull it out of off of the construction plane a little bit just so it's not in the way i don't, I don't like it when the model bisects the image it makes it difficult to work with one way or the other so go ahead and lock it go back to the top view and let's take a look at how this thing is built we've got what's obviously kind of a revolved element here this little collar is going to be revolved and then we've got this kind of fluted shape in here that starts from a circle and then kind of blends out into this fluted kind of sculpted shape. We've got these arms that, that make the lever go, and then we've got the little kind of head and face area and stuff like that. So let's, let's just go ahead and dig into this. Let's start with the easiest thing to do, which would be the revolve. And let's just go ahead and draw that out. I'm going to just start by just drawing a straight line. Then I'm going to use a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to place this at zero, just so I know it's centered. And we're going to make this rounded. And I'm going to pull this out about here and then just round it off. And I'm going to use Gumball to just bring it up in space. And then I'm going to shift drag, make it just a little bit smaller. Something like that. Now let's pull it out. Let's do the top one. And then let's, let's, be, let's be precise about this and we'll use, we'll use a ray to make these go down the the length of the of the center plunger here and we'll do it we'll do it precisely so we'll do a linear array i'm going to pick the object to array the number of items let's do i don't know let's do four that should be plenty and the first reference point is basically going to be where we're going to start from so we're going to start kind of from here and then we're just going to pull down and you see as i place the second one the other three place themselves kind of nicely there. So let's grab all this stuff and trim it up. I'm going to trim off all of these, and then I'm going to just trim these together. Hit escape to exit the trim command, and then hit join, or type join, and that gives us basically the shape that we're going to revolve. So if we go to the perspective view, and we go here to the surfacing menu and we pick the revolve. I'm going to revolve around zero and then go this way. And I want a full circle, so I'm just going to click it here in the command bar. That gives me my first piece. And you can see that, you know, my sketch wasn't very symmetrical. This feels a little thick to me. So I'm actually going to shift drag and scale this a little bit. And then I'm going to place it more or less back in space. And then maybe what I'll even do, I'm going to hide this curve. I'm going to make a layer for curves by just renaming that. And then I'm going to pick this, right click, change object layer, and then hide that. That way I can keep all my curves, but I don't have to look at them all the time. They're not going to get in my way. So this is a little bit short. You know, when I scaled it, I lost a little bit of height. So I'm going to, I'm going to remedy that by holding shift control and dragging a selection over this surface edge. Then I'm just gonna pull it up 
make it a little longer. It's called a sub-object selection and a sub-object edit. So let's go ahead and make the head. And I'm going to just be super simple about this and use a, use a sphere. And I'm going to start at zero so I know it's centered. And I'm going to just pull it out. Use Gumball to place it. Shift drag to scale the height. And then I'm going to scale the width. And then I'm going to go to the right view. And I'm going to scale the depth. Something like that. Let's shade it and see what it looks like. Pretty happy with that. I think that'll work. So what I don't want to do is, is uh, I don't want like a really sharp edge between here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick these two together right now. I'm going to cap this object so that this plunger is the little little activator shaft here is closed and then I'm going to just boolean these two together. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my top view again and I'm going to build a blend between here. And when you're building a blend, the most important thing to realize is that it, typically, you know, when you model something, you're you're looking, how do I build a surface? How do I build a surface from here? How do I build a surface from here? In this case, we're actually going to make a hole right we're going to model a hole first and i'm going to do that by starting with a center point line just so i know i'm symmetrical i'm going to pull this out something like that i'm going to pull this down and then i'm going to change this curves degree from one to three and what that's going to do is that's going to give me three or four evenly spaced points that i can grab and I can edit these, and then I can grab these, and I can edit these, and I can decide exactly where I want the top of the hole to be. The bottom of the hole I'm just going to do with a straight line. And we know now that our that our the things that we're going to trim out, right? I'm going to pick this and this and trim. Our blend is going to start here and it's going to go to here. Let's move our curves to here again. And let's go to perspective so we can see how this blend happens. Now, I just picked arbitrary locations. I don't really know that this blend is going to work perfectly as it sits. So we'll have to just give it a shot and see how it goes. And if we need to adjust, we can adjust. It's not a big deal. In this case, it's actually looking like it's going in really pretty nicely. So I'm going to just let that, I'm going to accept that and let it run. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go back to our top view. And let's do our little face. Let me just do this with a with an ellipse. And I want to just rotate it just a hair, just to make it a little happier looking. Right, this is grumpy eyes. This is happy eyes. We want happier eyes. Mirror this around zero, and now let's draw our face. I'm going to use a center point curve. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to pull this out, drop it to about here, and then change degree. Now, change degree allows you to alter the structure of a curve without changing its shape. If you change from a lower degree to a higher degree, it'll do so without altering the shape of the curve. Now, if you change from a higher degree to a lower degree, it's got to it's got to got to throw something away. So it will change the shape if you do that. I'm going to control C, control V, copy paste. Drop this down here. Grab these two points and I'm going to just pull them up and snap them to there. Do a little bit more point editing just to get a little closer to my original shape. And I kind of have to decide, you know, my sketch is a little skanky here. So it's like, I don't know whether I got to pick this side or this side. I think this side looks pretty good. So I'm going to just roll with that. So I'm going to just take these and this 
and I'm going to bring them up. I'm going to scale this to zero just so they're on the same plane for no other reason other than scaling to the same plane. I'm going to extrude these into surfaces. And the reason that I'm doing that is if I were to just trim through a curve, it'd blow through the entire part. I don't want that. I just want to trim through the top surface. So I'm going to pick these surfaces here. Oop, let's run the trim command first. These are the cutting objects. Let's go back to the top view. These are the objects to trim. And I might need to do this in shaded mode so I can see. Hit the escape key, and we'll just delete these. Now, I want these to have like a little depression in them, right? I want these to be like sunk in a little bit. And I could have done that like maybe booleaning a sphere out of here or something like that. But I'll show you a different trick on how to do that. If I take just a single point and I snap, let's say I snap from end to end and I find somewhere right in the middle here like that. And I use the patch tool. Who knows whether this will work. We'll give it a shot. I think it's going to work, but and we preview it. I don't want this to be tangent. Look at that. Now the cool thing about patch is it is historically enabled. So if I say OK, and then I go back and I pull this original point, I can adjust how deep or how shallow this goes in. Now the one thing about patch is it's not, it's not super precise about being able to handle edge curves. So this is not, this isn't going to join. You can see this right now. So let's, let's try and we, we kind of have identified that this is about the shape that we want. So let's run patch again. Let's do it with a little higher. Actually, that's all right. That looks like that might go. So let's run it. Let's see if it'll join. If it joins, we can run the show edges command, and we shouldn't have any pink, and in this case, we don't. So I'm going to control shift click mirror around zero, and I can steal this from, even though this is joined, I can steal this from that poly surface and bring it over here. Show edges, and that's all joined up. Let's do the same thing with the mouth. That worked all right. So let's just stick it a point here, and then we'll use Gumball to pull it here, and then we'll pull this down a little bit. And let's run patch again, see if we get lucky, and this works twice. A little bit different solution. Let's run it, but let's play with it a little bit because I'm not entirely stoked with how that looks. Something like that. Maybe let's pull it a little deeper. Maybe let's poke it up a little bit. That'll work, and you see it's pulled away from the edge a little bit, so let's just delete it and redo it. And that does a better job of holding the edge the second time. Join it, and check edges. So that's all sealed up, and if we render that, we can see that we have our little face in there. That's a pretty easy way to do that. Now, there's a million different ways to do that. We could build a surface. We could offset it. It could be embossed. It could be, you know, whatever. But I kind of like that. It's just like a little, a little sculptural kind of thing going on there. So let's draw the hair. Now, the hair, we have to decide kind of how we want this hair to roll. And I think let's start with the curve. And I'm going to start by just snapping to the end here and drawing one half of it to start with. You'll notice I used the shift key to put place the first point. That way I know it's tangent from side to side. And I can adjust a little bit there. So if I mirror this, I know this curve is going to be tangent. It's not going to end up with like a point or a, or a divot in the center here. Now, I have to decide like how, how am I going to do this? Am I going to Am I going to try and sweep something around here so that it's round? Am I going to just do something flat? Am I going to build a surface and then blend from one surface to the other? 
I think as I'm thinking about it, I think that's probably the best way to do this. So let's let's build this. And we probably shouldn't have this sharp since it's going to be on your hand, but let's do let's mirror that. Join it up. And we've got the basis of our curve. Let's just close this. I'm going to just run close. And it just throws a little segment in there, makes this a closed object. Now, I can make this into a planar surface, and then I can offset it, or I can do whatever I want in order to create its thickness, and then maybe I'll blend the edge over to make it round. And I think that's probably not a terrible way to do this. But I don't really want it to be a planar surface. I think I kind of want it to be a surface that has a little bit of crown to it. So I'm going to build a planar surface. You were like, you just said you didn't want it to be planar. Stick with me. I'm going to take this. I'm going to move this so that it's centered. If your gumball doesn't respect O snaps, by the way, right click on here and change it from snappy drag, smooth dragging to snappy dragging. Snappy dragging respects O snaps, and that will that will allow you to uh, be able to use O snaps to move things with gumball. I'm going to change degree here. I'm going to spell it right, and I'm going to change it from three to one, or from one to three, and then from one to three. And what that's going to do is going to give me four points that I can play with. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to select these. Actually, I'm not going to select those. I'm going to select just the center ones. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Just give it a little bit of crown. And then I'm going to pull the entire surface just up a hair because I need to create the gap. If I were to mirror this, the gap in order for the blend to go from one to the other. Let's go to wireframe, and I just need to, I got to soften this edge. You can't have a big sharp point on that thing. Let's just sharpen the, there, let's soften this a little bit. That failed because the radius was too big. Let's make it smaller. That's too small. That's too big. That's about right. Then we'll just use this as a trim curve. And we'll trim this off. We'll take this surface and mirror it. And then we'll just simply run a blend surface around this entire thing. And I'll stop trying to pick from my my menu here. Let's see. Let's chain the edges. Let's do the whole thing. And you can see that we get, I'm going to turn off these interior shapes. I don't need that much control. And you can see that we get, I don't even care about this because it's going to be hidden in the part. We get this nice kind of roundy thing. I can decide how much of that I want. And just say, okay, join it up bring back the other thing. You can see that the defect is hidden inside of this thing, so it's not even going to be a big deal. And if it was a big deal, I would just split it in half and mirror it. And then we're going to take this. I'm going to scale it down just a hair. There we go. That's a little better. Maybe stretch it just a hair. And then I'm going to Boolean this together. And there's our little head. She looks pretty happy. Why wouldn't she? She's opened her bottle of wine. All right. Let's go to the top view. Let's do let's build the let's build the main part of this. Now there's a corkscrew and stuff in here, but I'm not gonna bother building all that stuff for this demo. We're just gonna focus on the outside. So the top of this is gonna be a circle, right? So if I start at zero and I bring this up to here and then I go to perspective view and then I use gumball to rotate at 90 
And then I scale this using shift drag to about the right size. And then I'm going to copy this down to here. And I'm going to shift drag to get my overall size of this thing. So that's about what I want. So I want to go from here to here. But I want this to have this kind of fluted section going around it. So if I isolate this, I can go ahead and draw those fluted sections using an ellipse. Something like that. And then let's transform. Let's do an array, a polar array. And for a number, let's do, I don't know, let's try 12 and see what it looks like. So that's too many. You can see from the preview that's too many. So let's change. Oh, it's because it's 21. Let's try 12. That's better. Eh, maybe even fewer. Let's try 10. He just I want him to overlap, but I want him to overlap on top of this. So let's try 11. There we go. I want the overlapping to be outside of this. So that gives us kind of that fluted look, right? And we can combine all of this stuff very simply using Curve Boolean. Curve Boolean works just like regular Boolean, except it's with curves. I'm going to delete all the input and combine the regions. You can see that with just a couple of clicks, it allows me to create this shape. Let's go back to top view. Now it grew a little bit because we built it outside of that, so I'm going to shift drag and just scale it down a little. And this surface then starts to do something like this. Now, if I loft between these two, I just get straight lines, right? And that's that's okay. You know, if I do something like that, I just get straight lines. Because what I can do is it's like the maternity, like the maternity version. We don't want that. We want to <laughs> let's thin her up a little bit. Explode this. Turn our points on. Because you can't turn points on for a poly surface. So if you if you try and if you try and do this with a poly surface, it won't work. Shift drag. And we'll just add that really elegant curve to it, like that. Now we can join this all back together. We can cap this so we get a top and a bottom. And let's see, let's see what shell will do. If we were to shell this with a thickness of say, I have no idea how big this is. Let's figure out how big it is first. I should have I should have done some scale on this, but I never do for my demos for some reason. So it's about 10 inches tall. So for that, if we do, if we did something like, uh, if we did a shell thickness of about, I don't know, 0.1, let's see if, let's see if this will shell. And if it doesn't, we'll talk about what to do next. Now, here's the thing. Shell, when it does complicated things, sometimes it creates self-intersecting surfaces and it just doesn't complete. The difference between Rhino and some other products is Rhino at least gives you something to work with, right? So this is what the shell looks like after it was offset. And it gave you, it gave you a little bit of something that you can work with. So you could actually come through here and, you know, do something like this, where if you just came in here and did a blend and blended between these two, these two edges. And you could go in and actually finish this up and get a successful shell. Now, the difference between people, I see this and they're like, well, the shell failed, the shell tool failed. It didn't work. Well, that's true. But what it did do is give you as much as it could automatically so that you could go in and finish the rest of it instead of just failing. A lot of softwares, and I won't mention names, <clears throat> I'm not even going to say it. I was going to be clever. Throw some shade at our competitors, but I'm not going to do that. Is instead of just failing and saying, nope, can't do it, and leaving you kind of on your own, ours at least fails 
and gives you something that you can work with. So now what I can do, and let's see if it's planar. It might not be planar. If it's not, then yeah. See, it's not planar, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cheat. Let's just get the inside. Let's see. Now it looks like it didn't allow me to join that, which is interesting. So let's see what's going on here. Let's try deleting one of these. Let's see if we explode this, why it wouldn't allow us. Let's start with two of these. Why it wouldn't let us blend these together. So let's just try again. I bet we can figure it out. So that's a blend, right? That should work. And if we look at this, it appears that it's not respecting this edge correctly. So let's see, could we just untrim it? Is there something going on with this edge? And in that case, it doesn't look like it. So let's try, maybe we rebuild these. We're just gonna use the same point count. Now let's see if we not see if it'll blend. And if it doesn't, then maybe we go and we try something different, but let's just see. And it looks like again, it's not going to respect that edge. So let's try let's try lofting them together with tangency. That seems to be working. Match the start and end tangent and say okay. That worked. So let's bring back the others. I'm going to use the cell surf command to light everything up, isolate. And let's just go through and get rid of the ones that didn't work. And we could probably just go through and, and uh, do an array, you know, make one, fix one, and then array it. But let's just go through the exercise of fixing it. Now, there's some interesting things going on here. Let's try and do a match surf. And it looks like that's trimmed, so let's untrim it. Nope. There we go. Let's match it position and let's average it. That'll join up now. Let's do a loft, fill in the gaps match the tangents. Okay, so we can just clean this up like that. Match surf. Let's match these two together. Oop, looks like that might be a trimmed object. Let's untrim it. Can't match on a trimmed object, so we have to untrim it. There we go. Match surf. Oops, sorry. Match surf. Position, we'll average them. Those should all join up now. We're getting there. These guys. Both need to untrim. Let's untrim everything just to make our lives easy. Let's untrim all this stuff. That way we won't have to go back and keep doing it. We'll just untrim everything now. And the reason, again, we have to untrim it is because the uh, match surface does not work on trimmed edges. All right, so we've got this. We can do a loft. There's a little wonkiness going on up in this isoparam up here, but I don't really care because it's just the inside. Match these. Let's 
And you can see that that show edges is nice because we can see exactly what's going on. Match surf. I can see that as I'm doing this, it's successful. If it stayed pink, I would know it was wrong, right? I'd have to go back and fix it. So we're just cruising around. I'm going to run match surf again. I'm going to get all that out of the way so we can just go quickly. If I right click, it re invokes the same command. So if I know I have to use the same command over and over again, I can just go and quickly do this. Join these all up. And then we'll go and do all the lofting. That'll be a little bit more efficient. I'm a little bit of a kook about how many clicks I make. So I try to be efficient about the way I do it. If you spend all day doing this and you're clicking a mouse 25,000 times a day, <laughs> you get a little nerdy about how it goes together. Let's join all this up. All righty, doing better. Let's bring the other piece back. Yeah, it looks like we've got to explode this and match these pieces up. Join it. Oh, one little piece is not joining. Let's fix that. Still not joining. Gonna misbehave on me, huh? Let's run match again and we'll let it refine. There we go. Let's that nah, joined. There we go. All right, so let's bring this piece. Let's trim this top. I'm going to drop this just a hair and then scale it up. Trim. Tell you what, I'm just going to do this with a curve. Let's make it easy. All right, doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to trim the poly surface, so let's explode it and we'll trim them all as individual surfaces. Looks like there's some pieces in here. Let's find out what those are. Looks like those were all of our lobs. Must be some interest, must be some stuff going on at the top here. So I tell you what, let's go a different way. I don't like what Shell has done here, so let's try a different, let's try something different. Let's take this object and let's offset it. Let's do a solid offset. And we're going to do this for reference. And then what I'm going to do, because this is probably going to have the same problem as shell. Maybe not. Yeah, see, it's got, it's got problems in it. So let's undo that. And let's offset. Let's do a surface offset. And we're going to just use this for, for reference. We're going to go in 0.1. And we're not going to make it solid. We're just going to offset it. And this may or may not. Let's see. Let's see how it did. That actually offset cleanly. And I'm seeing something here, but this is good. So let's bank this for a second. Let's hide this. It looks to me like there's actually some trimming that, that's going on here that needs to happen. So let's fix that. Maybe I screwed up my original surfacing. Maybe, who knows? But let's fix it. This is the trouble of trimming in 3D space. So let's trim. We're going to use the curve switch. CRV enter allows you to trim with a surface edge. And it's not trimming. So I tell you what, let's take a piece that works. I'm going to hide that. I'm going to delete all this other stuff. Something has gone wrong 
with this. And so I'm going to just get rid of it. There's no reason to fight this thing. See all that nonsense? Let's get rid of it. Let's bring the one piece back that was good. Actually, we could use the offset. The offset looks good. But let's uh let's do a let's do a polar array. Let's do 11 of those. And it looks like it's overlapping on this side. Looks like it's overlapping on both sides, actually. Let's do this. Let's make one good one. Nope. Well, then, fine. When faced with a misbehaving model, I'm going to just use the offset because the offset worked just fine. <laughs> See that? I'm going to just scale that up and use that. I know when I'm beaten. So let's trim this off. There we go. I'm going to cap this now. And I'm going to break the bottom of this off. And I'm not going to worry about doing shell. I'm going to copy paste. And I'm going to just shift scale. I'm going to make a smaller copy and just stick it inside. I'm going to make it a little longer so that I can trim it, make them both planar. And let's make a Let's make a planar surface that goes across the bottom. Join it up. We will not be defeated. We cannot let the robots win. All right, so I made it, it's a little fatter, so let's scale it down. Let's just make it the right size. There we go. We're going to just scale down in one direction. Now we've got our part thickness. All right, set the little trim ring on the top. And I'm going to just make this something like this. Kind of a rounded square shape. Let's edit that a little bit. I want that to be a little softer. That's a little better. Now we're going to revolve that. Go to the front view. And let's do a revolve. If you type U enter, it just com completes it on the command line and gives you your full surface. All right, so there's our little trim ring on the top. And if we wanted to, we could even Boolean this together. All right. All right, so let's do the little, let's do the little wings out here. And those, those are going to be simple. We're just going to do those as an extruded piece. Just draw the curve. Edit it so it's the correct shape. Let's close it up. Make a planar surface. And bring our part back. Move it up a little bit. And we're just going to extrude that into a, into a thickened shape. Don't need to go both directions, just one. 
and let's just soften that edge. Too big. Yeah, it's still failing. So the reason the reason for that is, I believe, is we're coming down to a point down here, and that actually is kind of difficult for Rhino to resolve. So let's do, let's see if we can just go a little farther with it. So if we just do the entire thing, I think that'll get us a better result. Yeah, because it was failing down here, because what it was doing is it was coming out, it couldn't run around this corner. So if we just knock all the corners off, it allows the fillet to, replay, to uh, complete as needed. Let's mirror. That gives us the space for those guys to be. And then let's make the pivot because that'll give us a good spot to be able to rotate around. So it looks like it's just a, a little kind of a rivet kind of thing. So let's do that with sphere. And I'm going to do a Boolean subtract. Subtract it from that using this. Get rid of the rest of this. That gives me that. And then we'll do, we'll just grab a little hex. We'll put the hex shape in there. Ideally, you know, if I was going to do this for real, I would uh, know what size hex I was using and measure that out and all that stuff. But we are strictly in demo land here, so. All right, so there's that. Mirror it around zero. That gives us the other side. Mirror it around zero this way. Bring everything back. And we've got our main body. Now those poke through, if that was really important, you know, like I said, if we weren't firmly in demo land, I would go through and clean that all out. But for this, I'm just going to go ahead and Boolean this together. It leaves these pieces inside, but, you know, if this was for a rendering or just a quick print or something like that, I wouldn't really sweat that. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our, draw our wings here. And so the shape of these I'm imagining is something like this. Kind of something along the lines of this. And then I'm imagining this comes off at some point. Actually, it comes back here, and we're going to go tangent. So let's turn on that. I run my O-snaps disabled, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that in this video, but I run my O-snaps disabled, and what that allows me to do is um, is to uh, edit them uh, by using the Alt key to turn them on and off. Instead of having everything snap all over the place, I can just hit Alt, turn it on, hit Alt, turn it off, or just let go of Alt. And I want this to snap tangent to this. So let's do the other end. And I want that to kind of be in there. Let's trim this. And then let's do a fillet from here to here. Oop, too big. Or too small. Or maybe not the same plane. Let's see. Nope, not the same plane. That's the problem. Let's let's grab all of this and scale to zero. That'll flatten it. See how this is not lined up? If I just click that and scale zero, it flattens everything down. Now I can fill it. So that'll be the first part. I'm going to make a planar surface out of that. Actually, I'm going to blend the two ends of this together. I'm 
now I can make a planar surface. I'm going to just drag and scale this a little thicker. And, you know, I don't think I got a really good tangent match here, so let's fix that. See that little dent right there? Let's use a blend curve, which is my favorite thing for fixing stuff like this. I'm going to pull this down here, pull this up here, and then grab the two internal curves. Trim, join, done. Now that's nice and tangent. Now let's make a planar surface out of that. That'll make everything work better in the pen. And as we go, doing fillets and stuff like that. If I didn't fix that, my fillet would look really weird there when I when I did a fillet on it. So now I can just run one around here. Let's preview it. Too big, can tell because it's failing. So let's make it smaller. There we go. Same thing down here. There we go. Need to add the little secondary part in there, so let's just go ahead and draw that. I'm going to start inside here. I'm going to pull out. That way it'll fade out nicely. Finish inside up here. And then I'm going to just simply draw some curves to connect it all up. Doesn't matter what this stuff does inside because it's just going to be inside. Cell curve. I'm going to make it into a planar surface. I'm going to shade it so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to drag, holding down shift to go in two directions. And that makes that little secondary piece inside. Let's, uh, let's throw a few fillets on that just to soften it up. Boolean it together, and that's our wing, so to speak. Let's look at it, but let's make sure it's centered in here. I'm going to use the head and snap in the center of that. I'm going to make it a little thicker, like that. Mirror it over. We're almost done. Just got to make the gear. And ideally, what I'd want to see is let's use these two objects for reference. And if I were to, let's copy and paste. Say that this had teeth that needed to engage. Something like that, right? Let's line the center of this up. Let's relocate the gumball. Gumball relocate. Let's put it right in the center here. And then let's line that up with that. And then what I can do is draw a single tooth that engages with that. When it's centered, and rounded. Like that. And then I'm going to do a polar array. And then maybe, I don't know, how many do we need? Let's try 11. That might work. Maybe 12. 
What do you think? I think that'll work. Let's do that. Now let's give it a little meat. We don't want it to be too thin. Something like this. And then let's go back and do curved Boolean because that's going to be great for something like this. I'm going to click outside because I just want to get everything. So that's my gear. Let's do a planar surface out of it. Top view. Actually front view. Bring everything back. There we go. Let's stick this right in the center. And then I'm going to just drag shift to go in both directions. Cell curve, cell CRV, change the object layer. And I'm going to take these two objects. And before I get too crazy with this, I'm going to look at it and say, I don't really need these two teeth, so I'm going to trim these out. Helps if I pick the right command. And I'm going to close this up just using, just using a uh, edge surf. And I can, I can fill it this up if I want. Maybe I'll just leave it. Maybe it'll be good, like kind of a pressed gear kind of thing. And then I need a little gap. I need a little hole for this thing to go through. So if I go to the right-hand view, or sorry, left-hand view, and I can see that my gear is kind of, well, let's figure it out. Let's do it right. So if I have this thing, and I take a circle, and I stick it, in the center of this pivot. I can come out here and I know that I need at least that much gap, probably just a little more. All right. So I'm going to make a little I'm going to make a little cutter. Used I dragged and held control in order to get that extrusion cap. Mirror, and then I'm going to Boolean subtract from this using these two guys. And I can delete the input there. That makes it so that these guys can actually engage. Don't need that anymore. Boolean these two objects together. So now if I were to rotate this object, it actually would be believable that it would work. All right. So we've got our got our corkscrew we'd put the little you know mechanism and the corkscrew and things in there if we were going to do something if we we're going to get really crazy but i think this is probably mostly like you know maybe this is just a scene element part of a rendering that sits on a table or something or maybe it's just a uh, a quick concept sketch or something like that but let's hide the image i'm going to just flip her up so she's standing in the z And I'm going to set her on the ground. Let's check for open poly surfaces, and that's down here. Nothing lights up, which means everything's closed. Let's check for naked edges, which is also down here. No naked edges, no non-manifold edges. That's what we're looking for. We don't want anything open. Cell curve, let's just clean up a little bit. Let's throw some materials on her just for fun. So let's go to the materials page, or materials tab. 
Let's make a metal. Let's just throw it on the whole thing. If we wanted to be nuanced about it, we should make a second metal. And we'll change to a different material. Because this is like, you know, maybe this is cast. Let's go to rendered view. Maybe that's cast. Maybe this is chromed. Maybe these are cast. Metal things are rarely all the same finish. You know, maybe these are chromed actually. And that way, it kind of looks like the materials that it was made out of. Maybe this is, you know, this is, this is chromed steel, chromed steel. This is cast aluminum. Maybe these, maybe we even make one more metal. And we say, this is just a little tiny bit darker because maybe it's just a different type of metal. We want just a little variation in there. And this collar, we can do a sub-object selection, shift control click. Maybe we make a fourth metal and maybe this is even darker. There's a little accent or something. That gives it a, just a little bit more interest, right? Maybe these are even the dark metal as well. We can play with this stuff. That's one of the nice things about this rendering stuff is you can actually design right in the rendering environment and get a really good idea of what this thing is going to look like. Find a good view where you can see everything and then maybe we even flip over to ray trace mode and take a peek this is awfully light so maybe we go up here and darken this just a hair because it's fading into the background a little bit let's do it in rendered view so it goes faster Something's yelling at me. Let's go here. Maybe just make it just a tad darker. Not crazy, we don't want to get crazy, but just, just a little so it's got just a tiny bit of contrast with that white background. Let's try that. That feels better. Now she's not just fading away into the background. All right, so we did that about an hour. Really simple little model, but it's got a lot of cool little features and it's got this believable mechanism. Like it makes sense because we scaled it correctly that this works, even though the stuff isn't in here to actually make the corkscrew work. You can look at it and kind of get the feel that like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, this has got a thing. And it would be really easy if we wanted to go put a, a helix in here or something for a corkscrew and fake it if we wanted to do a second one tipped over so you could see the corkscrew mechanism in the background and lay out a little cool little layout or something like that. We could do that. There's a, there's a helix tool in here that we could uh, certainly use if I can find it. Yeah. There we go, helix tool. <laughs> I knew it was in there. <laughs> so we would just do that and pipe it, make a corkscrew. And then we could fake that whole thing in there, put a little plug in there to hide those little tabs that we forgot to cut off, right? But for an hour, gets the idea across. Hopefully that gives you, gives you some tips and tricks to try. Hope you enjoyed it. We will catch you on the next one. Thanks for joining, bye.